Hi, Kevin Coy here with uh, Micro House Building episode number 10. Um, hopefully you followed uh, 1 through 9 so you know where we're at. And today what we're going to do is we're going to start making a wall here. we got this all framed up. You've seen this in earlier videos. i got my window right here. And we're going to sheet this, put the Tyvek house wrap on it, <clears throat> and stick a window in it so you can see how far we go. And then after that the step will be siding and trim. So we're almost done with this wall. So let's get started. I drafted my son-in-law, Stephen, to help me do this. Say hi, Stephen. Hello. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to have a three and a half inch tab on each side of this, and what's going to happen is this is an end wall. The side walls later on in the in the episodes when you see in the future, are, they're going to butt right into this, and that's what's going to help stabilize putting the framing together. So we're just going to make sure we're three and a half inches. few screws in here. I'm using inch and a half or inch and five eighths gold construction screws. And just like on the floor in the earlier videos, about every six or eight inches is fine. screw every screw in just in case you're worried about that. I'm just going to demonstrate this and tack it on for right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow my pattern. I've got some screws set at the top of each of these studs. So I can find where they're at when I put the next sheet on. So there's sheet number two. I already pre-cut the window hole, so we didn't have to do that on the camera. And it's rough cut. So that I can uh, get my window in. tacked on. Again, normally you'd want to go ahead and put uh, all your screws in before you go to the next step. But I'm not going to make you suffer through that. 
Now I got some uh, Tyvek house wrap. That's a brand name. House wrap is the generic of what we're doing here. This is a, a three foot tall roll. You can buy it in eight and nine, I believe. It's just harder to handle. So what I want to do thing about a slap stapler. One more. to do now is just attach that on the inside we'll do another video so I can show you how to do that so I wanted you to see this is ready to go we can do our trim now in our uh, siding we'll do that on the next episode I want to show you a couple tools I used camera in a little closer. Here's the cutout from this window hole that I, I cut out. And the first thing I did was uh, I took a spade bit like that. That's a one inch spade bit. 
You stick it right in your drill and you can just drill a hole in three corners so you can get your saw blade in. Sounds like a mad scientist rattling around back there. This is a reciprocating saw. It's kind of like a jigsaw on steroids. You can use a jigsaw if that's what you've got to cut this. You can use a handsaw, or you can use one of these. You can cut a house in half with one of these. They're pretty handy. And so I just stick that through the hole I made. Cut this way. Cut this way. Cut this way. And then finish up cutting that way and drop that piece out. So now I've got my hole for my saw, or my uh, window rather. couple of important things. Here's a 28 ounce framing hammer. That's real handy for pounding one of these together if you're not using screws. Uh, you don't want to use a household hammer. It's not big enough. You're going to get real tired swinging that. So get yourself a heavier duty hammer than the regular household hammer. <clears throat> these are carpenter's pencils. That's a new one and you can see my used one. I've got these scattered out all over my shop and uh, these are just indispensable when it comes to working uh, so you can get these pencils at any hardware or big box uh, lumber yards they're like 29 39 cents a piece and I would have like you know go get a dozen of them or half a dozen of them and keep them sharp and keep them handy because they're indispensable for they're better than a regular pencil pencil they're not going to last in this kind of an environment so the next thing I want to talk about is get yourself a good quality tape measure this is a $3 tape measure. This is about a $25 tape measure. They're both 25 feet. That's a good uh, size tape for what you're doing here. Um, the real features here, and I know this might sound silly, how to buy a tape measure. See the difference in the tongue size? This is a lot sturdier than this. This, when you're, when you're reaching out 8, 10, 12 feet trying to measure across your walls, this thing's going to curl and buckle and flop around on you where this one's going to go a lot farther and you're going to be less frustrated trying to grab a hold of a board and measure something. Plus you can see this a lot clearer. It's easier to read and so that's pretty handy. All right. Levels can be handy. Um, that's a four foot level and, and when you're measuring to level up your walls and you're trying to make sure you're plumb this way and out here on the edge and so forth that comes in real handy when you're putting your walls up against each other and laying out floors. Smaller ones are going to be handy for checking your inside of your windows and doors to make sure you're level. Um, you can get an even smaller one. They've got little torpedo size that have a magnet on them so you can use those in even tighter situations so you can uh, get everything plumb and level like you want to. That's a lot of information in a video. I hope you had to uh, fun watching that. It's really not that hard. I wanted to, you know, take the mystery out of this process for you. Um, I'll, I'll see you on uh, episode number 11.